Hey there. It has been like way too long. I really have to apologize for being uh, uh, missing in action here. Uh, but man, the recovery from getting back from Europe turned out to be worse than I thought. Uh, mostly in just in getting things done. We were fine. We didn't really seem to have a jet lag problem too much. I think there were a couple extra naps taken in there, but yeah, been back for like a week and a half now and finally starting to get back to playing guitar. Put new strings on my guitar just this morning before I, before I, oh, and it's really inspirational. And got out a new lesson today uh, that had been sitting around for a long time. I'm way backlogged. I might have mentioned this on fly on the wall lessons. And so I was really glad to uh, start working through things a few days ago. And, and if all went well today, you saw Victor working on the Eric Clapton tune, Senia. And I just uh, decided I would mess around with it as when I turned on the camera. It's a cool tune. I forget, I forget to play it sometimes, like for years at a time. So anyway, it is August 9th, and hopefully we're back in the flow of new lessons and, uh, and weekly updates and everything. This weekly update, I mean, this should almost cover like a month's worth of stuff, so I'm not really going to go through the long list of all the new lessons. We had John Mayer, the Eagles, Jack Johnson, Liz Wright, all this kind of stuff um, from mostly my esteemed colleagues um, and a couple fly-on-the-wall lessons, soldiers going, going back. But I uh, mostly wanted to tell you about what some things that are going on and, and a little bit about our trip, our 15 days uh, abroad. Um, the uh, biggest news that I just heard, that I know people we've been working on for a while, but we've been, uh, the site, you know, runs on flash video. Well, pretty soon there's going to be a revamp of that whole thing and everything should, should be, um, this is all part of the two to three year uh, process that we've been in to, to get things into the 21st century and we're getting closer but the video thing is is imminent that should, it all should be working much better lately uh let me think about some of the things i wanted to talk about i you know what i'm going to tell you about the trip first and some of the things that happened there uh because nani and i flew from san francisco to amsterdam had like a six hour layover and then another three hour flight to athens which i don't even remember at all by then it was we were i was conked out um, but we spent a couple days in Athens where it was incredibly hot. And so we didn't, we, we watched Rick Steves, uh, travel videos on Greece in the hotel because it was almost too hot to even leave the hotel. So that's how we saw Greece. Thanks, Rick. Um, and, uh, we did get out and saw the changing of the guards, the cool, really cool thing, a guard changing thing that happens at the tomb of the unknown soldier there. We had a view of the Acropolis and the Parthenon, uh, from our, the terrace where we had breakfast every day. And then uh, uh, we did take a bus out there, and it was just so hot where there was just no way we were hiking up to walk around ruins in the in you know hundred degree temperatures there. So, so saw a little bit of it. Then a few days later, we took a bus out to Kalamata, where my cousin Vince lives, and this was spectacular. A little seaside town out on the Mani Peninsula um, that is a lot of Greece, just tiny villages. Especially when we left there and flew over them, you just there's all these little enclaves of tiny things. It's not like here in the Bay Area where we've got, you know, hundreds of miles of cities all attached but wall to wall um, and long and windy mountain roads that, that connect all the ones in Greece. So I had some uh, really hadn't been that exposed to Greek food, but it was it was a treat. Boy, the uh, heroes and um, uh, souvlaki. Anyway, I'm a fan. We've hit a few of them now around here that we'd always driven by and never stopped at and they really do have greek salads with every meal if it weren't for the olives they'd be perfect someday no nah, never mind i can't i can't to pretend to make a promise i know i won't keep i will never be an olive fan olives and mushrooms keep them off my pizza and out of my sight um anyway uh then we flew to amsterdam and did a little sightseeing we saw a very cool uh castle just outside of vase where karina lives um Mauderschlock, i think it was called um and I gotta, I, yeah, I'll get some of these pictures up. And did a canal cruise, um, dinner cruise in Amsterdam with, with Mark and Karina. And uh, that was a blast. So now we've finally done a little sightseeing. And then had camp. And camp, once again, it was record setting temperatures going on all over the Netherlands. And it was, uh, if you saw a few of the videos that I put up there, notice I was very wet. Yes, it was toasty. Uh, but we had four students who I think all learned a lot and had a great time. Eric, Mark, Dean, and Eddie. Now, Eddie was, uh, Eddie was from the Netherlands, uh, actually from Belgium, but he lives in Amsterdam now. 
and Eric was from Poland, Mark from Texas, where it was cooler than it was in Amsterdam while we were there. Unbelievable. And, uh, and then Dean, a longtime contributor to the site, who uh, recently brought up or answered, either asked or answered the question. I think, I think Dean started the question about modes that were on, that was on the forum just recently. And hopefully that cleared everything up for everybody a little bit because the answers he came up with, um, I'm going to go into modes a little bit and just then tell you that it's, it's really is less complicated than it seems. If you understand that every set of notes, every scale, C scale, has a relative minor scale that is all the same notes just starting on A, it also has a relative Dorian scale that is all the same notes starting on D or starting on note 2 has a relative Phrygian scale that is all the same notes starting on E, has a relative Lydian scale, all the same notes starting on F. Anyway, so um, if, if, uh, if we need to go into that a little bit more, I'd be happy to, happy to uh, clarify that or go a little further into that on the forum. But because I want to tell you about something else that the four guys did at camp that was pretty cool. One of my um, plans was to have them work on some things together, more like in pairs or something like that, but uh, somebody glommed onto a Neil Young song. Ooh, these new strings. Excuse me for just a second. Let me double check that. They um, got inspired. By a song that I remember hearing the first time I ever heard this song. It had not been released yet on an album. 1974. Um, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young headlined a concert at the Oakland Coliseum that uh, was not yet referred to as Day on the Green, but pretty uh, within a few months they started doing these regularly and they started having this whole series of concerts called Day on the Green. And this one was Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, the band, Joe Walsh, and Jesse Colin Young. I mean, this was an all-star lineup and we were there like all day it probably started at three in the afternoon or something and music went till midnight and <coughs> um Crosby Stills Nash and Young eventually did a um a bootleg came out an import came out um called we waited three years for this and th that was um when I found this 10 or 15 years ago I was uh I thought it was so cool because I was at the show and I remembered stuff Remembered hearing some Neil Young songs that were new that were not re released yet. Human Highway was one, and the other was this. Anyway, our four guys at camp. Oh man, I might have to put together a great version of two of them playing it, and two of them, two of them singing it. And went to well, it was, you know, a couple of guitars and a, and a little solo. Eddie came in with a solo, sang some harmony. Eric sang the whole thing. Mark and Dean played it. It was really cool. I got to start you know, getting through that video. Let's see how. great job of it so I got to find that video and share it with you because it turned out to be a highlight of camp other highlights of the camp were um, we're just having having everybody there Vanessa singing songs Karina singing along with people um, and the crew boy the last night these for old people this was really dumb but um, I tend to get up pretty early in the morning as some of you might know and uh, the last night there was a little jam session sort of going on and at midnight I gave up. I said, okay, I can't do this. And uh, 
went to bed, woke up about 5.30, kind of rolled around for a little while, and still heard some noise, and decided to get up about, get to leave the room about 6.15. Everybody else had just left. These, these lunatics pulled an all-nighter, playing up until 6 o'clock in the morning. And, uh, uh, and we had to, like, get up at 8 and check out. So, but that's sometimes what happens at camp. Of course, stuff like that, you know, stays, stays at, at camp. But it was, it was a blast. So uh, I want to thank Vanessa and Karina for being so, sort of for getting the whole thing rolling and making it happen. Had a great time. Uh, Vanessa, speaking of Vanessa, she is here in California right now on her holiday. And I believe in Southern California, and she'll be, if anybody's in Phoenix next week, the Guitar League that our friend Bart runs is still a happening thing every second Tuesday of the month um, at the Courtyard or at a Marriott in kind of, I guess it would be the northwest side of Phoenix. Um, but, uh, which is, if you're like on the other south, if you're, if you're in the southeast side, it's a long way, um, as I found out a couple times I've been there. So anyway. Vanessa is being the presenter at uh, the Guitar League next week, so if anybody's in the Phoenix area, be sure to check it out. Um, let's see, what else did I want to talk about? Uh, some of that stuff is old. You know, there was a question a little while ago on the forum. Um, let me see if I had something else on the list. Not really too much. I just want to tell you a little bit more about the trip. That was it. We got home last Tuesday night late. Um, but the song Toulouse Street, the que a question came up a while ago, and it's it's in a the part in question was in a, in a tuning I'm not going to go into right now. I think it was just double drop D, but it, not too big a deal. But um, I want to talk about one really uh, useful but rarely needed technique, and that is the ability to play notes on two different strings on different frets with the same finger. Now what I have here is an example, I, I forget what song, I, oh I do this in, in uh, I might have to run through all this to see what really happens. There's an example. Okay, I just played um, an A chord with a B flat in it. So it has a flatted ninth in it. It's shaped like a D chord. And so I've got a D shape, just one string off. If it sounds terrible, you probably got it right. And the melody goes from E to F to G. There. So what I did here was, in order to get that F, I played it with this part of my index finger. The tip of my index finger was at the second fret on the fourth string. And then I used like the side of my finger here to press down. So there's kind of it's it's what I might call an arch bar, where this is at one fret and this is at a fret below. Usually this wouldn't this really wouldn't work the other way. Um, but anyway, that's an example of something that that happens in there. And then at the end of that, I add the high G up there. So the question about Toulouse Street was exactly that. There was a spot where where. All your fingers seem to be tied up, and then you add it. There's a note that gets added at the first fret, even though your f first finger is already at probably the second fret or something like that. So, I uh, hope that got cleared up. There were other questions. The one about classical gas, I think, got cleared up too, because that was more just a, a couple questions about fingering. And so, it's really common when you see Roman numerals in classical guitar fingering that it means a bar. And the part in classical gas that happened is the part that, where this happened. play the notes right. And what happens in there is that I go to an F chord with a full bar, but then just lift the lower part of the bar off so that I have the fourth string open as the next bass note, and play the second fret with that same area of the first finger. Then I'm in good position to put the bar back down at the third fret that happens for the G chord. Then do the same thing, lifting it off so that I've got a, a sixth string open. And that keeps it, means I can land on the A minor chord just there. So you see this. Now, as I mentioned in the, in the, uh, the, on the question on the forum, my friend John and I went to great lengths many years ago to overcomplicate classical gas. And 
in the quest to improve it, came up with this set of fingerings. Which is absolutely not what Mason Williams did. The chords are C, F, D, and G. Just play C, F, D, and G. And three notes on each one. So, I, I hope I mentioned that in the lesson, but I did that lesson so many years ago, over 10 years ago, you know, which back when, I think it was over 10, it was like, it was in the early, early days of TG. Um, speaking of which, we're getting close to our next camp. We have about six or seven weeks to it, and uh, we've had a few new campers sign up, which is great, you know, people who haven't been to our camps before, and uh, so I want to welcome, welcome them. We'll keep them nameless for right now until I... Just, not sure if they want to, everybody if the, everybody wants everything uh, advertised there. In the meantime, I should play something to get out of here. I have been so negligent. reviewing some or revisiting tunes that are part of the 50th anniversary of uh, this, of Woodstock of course and um, that one maybe wasn't ever played there but could have been um, one of my students is working on a uh, like 20 songs that they need to perform at his uh, at a service that they're doing because it's called the Woodstock Shabbat and so they have rewritten many of the lyrics to tunes to have something to do with uh, uh, with their faith and they're playing stuff like Never mind, I'm, let me not give away too much of that. Because I'm trying to come up with some Woodstock lessons. So if anybody has a request of something that was played at Woodstock that has not yet been part of, that is not yet part of the Target program, let's put that into a forum post. Because over the next next two weeks, I think, my, my goal is to get a couple of Woodstock songs happening.
think that is it for today. See you next week.